Hey guys, thanks for watching. Unqualified Critics here, and I'm going to talk to you about the Capcom Cocktail Cabinet. Now, I did a first impressions video of this previously, and now that I've had some time to spend with it, I'm going to talk to you about my final review for this, and ultimately, is it worth your money? Is this something you should add to your collection? My overall impressions are the game selection is fantastic. I thought that when I picked the cabinet up, but the more time I've had to spend with it, including with some games I hadn't played before or hadn't played much before, uh, I think even more highly of the game selection. I see no noticeable emulation or build quality issues with the cabinet, and I couldn't say that for some of their uh, previous Arcade 1UP products. And the only issue, uh, really with this cabinet is that it's too short. Otherwise, I think they nailed the cocktail experience. A lot of people were worried that the, the product size was wrong or the monitor size was wrong. Yeah, I'd like a bigger screen here and yeah, I'd like it to stand taller, but I have an easy fix for that that really looks professional. And with that fix in place, this really does feel like a uh, reasonably high quality cocktail cabinet in your home. And for $450 to $500, that's a pretty big deal because you know, buying one of these cabinets from like a rec room masters or something, you're just, you're going to put more money into it. So I think overall for the value, this is a pretty impressive product. For positives that I see with this product, number one is, has to be game selection. Strider and Ghosts and Goblins both are challenging games. Even when you have unlimited credits, these games are all on free play. Everybody knows arcade one up games don't require quarters. So the downside to that is that you play a beat em up like, you know, uh, Punisher on the Marvel cabinet or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinet. And yeah, it's fun the first time you play it, but it kind of gets old because, you know, you go through your four, five, six levels, you beat the game. There's no real challenge because you have unlimited credits. You just keep hammering that one up button and you just keep walking to the right and eventually you're going to win. That's not true with Strider and especially Ghosts and Goblins. You do have to have skill. Darkstalkers is a rare arcade title. I had never played it before. I'd heard of it before. I'd played Capcom and SNK, uh, Mark, Match of the Millennium, I think it was called, for Neo Geo Pocket Color years ago. And that had a couple of the Darkstalker players, uh, Felicia and Morrigan. But I didn't even know they had their own game. And it turns out this game is really fun. It's a very approachable fighting game. It's got fantastic visuals. Even though this is the original Darkstalkers game and that the graphics got better over time uh, until they went to 3D and I guess things kind of fell apart. But it looks really good. And of course, it's a good Street Fighter collection. You already know if you like Street Fighter or not. You probably at least don't mind it and maybe you even really love Street Fighter. This has a good selection of Street Fighter 2, and they even threw in the original Street Fighter just to get, I, I won't say be complete because there are other versions of Street Fighter, of course they could have added, but just to have a well-rounded collection. The cabinet design is great. The rim of the cabinet itself actually has real T-molding in it. Now, not around the control panel sections, that's the normal tape that Arcade 1UP applies, but around the top, the tabletop of the cabinet, there's T-molding. It's full-size T-molding, and it looks really good. The plexi top itself is sturdy, seems pretty scratch-resistant, and so you can feel comfortable using this as a real cocktail table, which again is its purpose. The look of the cabinet is really slick. Now, I'm only applying that feedback to the Black Series uh, arcade one up the regular street fighter cocktail cabinet it's a, probably a, a better value for what you're paying especially if you get it on sale but i think it's ugly that design for the street fighter cabinet that they applied it was never meant to be applied to a cocktail cab and i just don't think it looks right the attention to detail is there there are actually these screw-in feet uh, these these plastic and metal screw-in feet that go uh, into the bottom panel of the cocktail cabinet. And why is it important you can screw them in? Well, you have variable height. You have about an inch of variance of height for each of the four feet. So just like when you install a pool table, your floor might not be perfectly flat. And that's okay. You just adjust the four feet until you get to flat. Now, I didn't use those feet because I wanted the extra seven inches of height. And 
you know, I'm still upset that the product didn't come with seven inch uh, of additional height to begin with. Honestly, that was a, an inexcusable oversight, but these screw in feet were a nice attention to detail. They've never done anything like that to ensure that their cabinets are level. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put these on the bottom of every riser that they produce, but that was a nice touch. I also have to give it to them on the component quality. For 450 or 500 bucks, I think this is a good deal for what you get. You get the Sanwa joysticks. Those are about $20, $24 a piece at retail. You get two of them, of course. Uh, you get good quality buttons. They're not great, but they're good. They look good with the all black on the black cabinet. And you get stereo speakers, just like every other Gen 3 cabinet. So finally, we get stereo Street Fighter, which is something that's been bothering me for a long time. So I'm glad that's been resolved. Four negatives or drawbacks for this product. The 17 inch monitor really should be 20 inches or bigger. 24 would have been great. You could have made that argument even if this was just the Namco table with the single player view at a time, but this is split screen. So even more so, it'd be nice to have a larger monitor and to better fill out the cabinet to bezel ratio. The black label, black levels, excuse me, on this monitor aren't great. And I can't tell if that's just because you're viewing it vertically. I compare this video or the, this monitor to the one in the Marvel cabinet. And honestly, the Marvel one looks better. I just don't notice a black levels issue with that cabinet. I don't know if it's just because of the color palette for the games or what, but it just looks really great in Marvel. And for this cabinet, eh, it just looks pretty good, but I definitely wouldn't give them an A for the monitor, both on size and those black levels that, I, that I'm dealing with. down trying to play your game the controls are gonna be really far away the speakers and the screen are gonna be farther away from your face than you want and it just looks a little bit weird it almost looks like something you'd sit on rather than something you'd sit out and play now I'm not you know how can I say well it's the table sits too short but it's still a good product well because you can add riser feet for not a lot of money and that's a pretty good solution if that solution wasn't out there I don't think I could recommend this cabinet and the final drawback, at least in my case, the quality control issues of Arcade 1UP that have haunted them from day one, they're still in play. My plexiglass cover came scratched with multiple scratches, but one by the screen that's pretty big. And it also came missing a part, a three and a half millimeter uh, audio, like, like an auxiliary cable, but a three and a half millimeter audio cable splitter, which is what you need to connect the player one and the player two audio to the PCB. Now, it turns out one of those splitters is only a few dollars to buy. And yeah, my plexi is scratched, but you know, it's not the end of the world. It, it isn't over the screen. It's just near where the screen is. So these are both things I can live with. But here's the thing. I emailed Arcade1Up's customer support day one that I got this, and I still have not heard back. It's been about a week. I think that's inexcusable, and it shows that they still have room for improvement with their customer experience. So my closing thoughts on this, I think it's worth it. I think if you're interested on this cable or on this table or on the fence at all, go out and buy it. This is a good product. I've been happier with this than any other arcade one up product I've bought. It looks awesome in my game room. If you feel like you have a spot to put this, it's going to look really cool. It draws a lot of attention. The black series looks good in person. I've had a lot of compliments on this. People seem to notice it does look like a premium quality product. And it's really fun to play because of that game selection. Now, I've been reading a lot in the Arcade One Up Reddit and just kind of in my comments and beyond. And it seems like there's a lot of enthusiasm for folks trying to get these Arcade One Ups as cheap as they can 
at Walmart, Best Buy, wherever. And there are a lot of markdowns out there. And you can use sites like BrickSeek to you know, find the cheapest one in your area. And that's all good and well, but it seems like a lot of folks now, it's almost become a game to not buy the product when you want to, but to wait until it goes down and kind of see how low the, can the price go. And I don't know that that's going to be a healthy market for Arcade One Up to sell into for the long run. You know, they do have their drawbacks, but the fact is two years ago that that brand didn't exist and we didn't have affordable mini, but yet stand up, you know, close to full size arcades that you could buy for your house and have just a whole bunch of them. Yeah, you could get multi cades and Rec Room Masters has been around. There are a lot of brands out there that do good multi cade work. But if you wanted that original licensed artwork and that, you know, custom control panel that really matched the game, there weren't other options available. So I'm glad that these guys have come to this market. I think they've done a pretty good job. But I think if, you know, nobody's going to buy these cabinets anywhere near full price, I assume there's just only so long that companies like Walmart and Best Buy are going to keep stocking these. So I sometimes wonder if we're going to see these guys in business for the long run. But think about that when you consider if you should buy an arcade or not. Do you want to support a brand that's catering to this small but enthusiast market? And yeah, they're not perfect, but they've learned as they've gone. And overall, I'd say, you know, most of us would agree they've done a pretty good product. So what's next for Arcade One Up? Well, the next stop is CES. January 7th through 10th, that's in Las Vegas. They're going to be in booth 21308. And I'm going to keep my ear to the ground for rumors and if there are any leaks going into CES. And hopefully we have some news to break on January 7th. I fully expect we will. Key things I'll be watching out for and things that I'm, I'm curious about and, and areas where I suspect Arcade One Up might go next. The first one's a little bit out there, but will they at some point branch off from vintage arcade games and start developing new arcade games or team up with companies to create whole new experiences for a home arcade that were never in the arcade back in the day at a certain point you run out of vintage games to license and i don't know how you know good they are at licensing these games how long they can keep going but eventually they're going to run out of properties that are even available will older cabinets that they put out last year, the Gen 1 and even Gen 2, which I still think aren't up to par, will they be revised and re-released with the newer quality build, the better quality MDF board, the better quality controls, and the stereo sound, light up marquees, all of that. They've hinted at that strategy before. Their CEO has talked about expecting this market to be sustainable because they think people will replace the older versions of the product with newer versions, just like you do with your phone. That suggests to me they're going to be doing updated versions of their past releases, which I think would be great because they already have released some really good game titles. For me, I'm looking for NBA Jam and SNK as the two major properties that I'm hoping drop at CES. We know they've been working on licensing for both for at least a year, and hopefully they've had a breakthrough and we're going to see that at CES. But we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you watched this long, hit like. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you click the notification bell. We're not a big channel. We don't get a big push from YouTube. So if you're interested in our content, make sure you're subscribed to all of our notifications and you'll know every time we put out a new video with the latest news. Catch you next time, guys.